it's pretty hard to do cross-country skiing in snowless landscape. Today we also go through some plastic pollution and find out how climate change is affecting the insect populations. Welcome to the Blue Marble News Watch. Sour fresh after skiing there in a snowless landscape. We start with climate change threatening winter sports very existence. Here on CNN.com page you can find article about this and some video also from some nice winter sports where from landscapes where you see very very little snow. The warming planet has major ramifications on winter showback across the globe including a long-term drying trend for many. That's a concern for winter sports enthusiasts and communities that depend on snow throughout the year. Not many understand this better than climate advocacy group known as Protect Our Winters, POW. The group is an organization of professional athletes and like-minded individuals fighting the policy to protect winter sports and mountain communities. Increased temperatures are melting away both my sport and my livelihood. Professional ski mountaineer and POW representative Caroline Leach told the US Senate late last year. This year has been prime example of what is becoming more common. Snowfall has been abysmal in California this winter. And this is what we have learned from all over the northern hemisphere, especially this year that the winter has been extremely warm, breaking records all over the world. Here in NWS Sacramento tweet, there is two pictures showing what the difference a year makes. Left 2019, right 2020. Sierra snowpack is below normal for this time of year, about 58% statewide. Dry weather is expected to continue. We have seen these news all around the world this year and here are some examples. CNN. Russia just had its warmest winter temperatures, leaving Moscow snowless. TheGuardian.com. This winter in Europe was hottest on record by far, say scientists. And from Finland. Mild winter put squeeze on Saima ring seal. And this was the topic we went through on my earlier episode. And I will come back to this Saima ring seal as we hear how the breeding season has gone in this snowless landscapes. Oceans are well known to be good carbon sinks, absorbing carbon dioxide, as well as forests also. But in this Guardian news, Ocean's capacity to absorb CO2 overestimated study suggests. Research into North Atlantic plankton likely to lead to negative revision of global climate calculations. And here is a picture, satellite picture also, where phytoplankton blooms are visible from space in this 2017 satellite image taken of the Gibraltar Strait. The North Atlantic may be a weaker climate alley than previously believed. According to study that suggests the ocean capacity to absorb carbon dioxide has been overestimated. A first ever winter and spring sampling of plankton in the western North Atlantic showed cell sizes were considerably smaller than scientists assumed, which means the carbon they absorb does not sink as deep or as fast nor does it stay in the depths for as long. We have found a misconception. It will definitely impact the model of carbon flows, said Oregon State University microbiologist Steve Giovanni. It will require more than just a small tweak. Researchers say the spring phytoplankton bloom in the North Atlantic is probably the largest annual biological carbon sequestration mechanism on the planet. Like a vast forests of tiny plants in the sunlight, upper part of the ocean, they draw down carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. The bigger the plankton, the higher the chance they will sink into the deep mesopelagic zone of the ocean, where carbon can be trapped for more than thousand years. Until now, climate models have assumed that diatoms, one of the biggest types of plankton, were dominant. But the study published in the International Society of Microbiological Ecology Journal reveals 
they are very minor share of biomass when compared with much smaller cyanobacteria, picopito eukaryotes and nanopito eukaryotes. So this news increases the importance of forests all over the world as a carbon sinks. But let's move on to our this week's Twitter news. You can find Blue Marble News Watch also from Twitter at Marble News. So please subscribe if you want to hear some small environmental tweets during the week. And here is one of my favorite tweeters, Oceana. And it says, did you know a group of jellyfish is called a smack? A group of sharks is called a shiver. A group of otters, rump. A group of grabs, consortium and a battery of paragudas. So you can check this tweet also from your own Twitter. Our second tweet is a Plastic Planet tweet. Forget liquid hand soap in pernisos. Hashtag plastic. Why you should switch to a soap bar? And I think this is pretty obvious why we don't need this kind of soap. Lego Lost at Sea tweeted a shampoo bottle that we found during a deep clean of a Cornish sea cave with our great friend Rob Arnold Art last year has just been dated by Unilever to 1962 between 1966. Extraordinary really. You can find Rob on Instagram. And more closely you can find it from Lego Lost at Sea. Then from Parents for Future, let's keep air traffic on this level after Corona. And pretty amazing animation how air traffic has decreased during Corona. And another tweet from Oceana. Coral reefs are the rainforest of the sea. And some information about coral reefs here in this great video. You can find it from Oceana's Twitter. They cover less than 1% of the sea floor but support more than 25% of all marine species. What a beautiful animals. But we move on to our last tweet, which takes us to our main topic of this week. Tapani Veistola's tweet, help the Beezer. Beezer helps us. And this is from Finnish Luonnonsuojeluliitto, Natural cons Conservation. We get to know more closely these five ways to help the bumblebees and insects in our last news. So let's move on to that. Our next story by theguardian.com takes us to the plastic pollutions. Report reveals massive plastic pollution footprint of drink firms. Report says plastic from Coca-Cola, plastic company Nestle and Unilever products could cover 83% football pitches every day. And here we see mass of empty plastic bottles. The NGO estimated the burning of plastic packaging put to the market by the companies create 4.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Four global drink giants are responsible for more than half a million tons of plastic pollution in six developing countries each year, enough to cover 83 football pitches every day according to a report. The NGO tier fund has calculated the greenhouse gas emissions from the open burning of plastic bottles, shachets and cartons produced by Coca-Cola, Pepsi company, Nestle and Unilever in developing nations where waste can be mismanaged because people do not have access to collections. In those countries it seems like they mainly been burned and this causes a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. In Finland we have a very good recycling system for plastic bottles. For example, all these bottles in this picture could be recycled in Finland. I have here example bottle. This is one and a half liter bottle and you get 40 cents from this kind of bottle. And if I remember correctly from half liter bottle you get 20 cents. So that is a lot of money, this kind of junk pile of empty bottles. We'll move on to our main topic of this week, which is all about the beezers. Our main topic of the week is from Yle.fi. It's telling us the amount of pollinators has collapsed. That can be fatal for humankind. The news says the amount of pollinating insects in the world has decreased alarmingly. And the reason might be because 
destruction of habitats, pesticides, alien species and climate change. And it is also a catastrophe for humans because 75% of all the corps needs pollinators. In the Museum of Natural Sciences in Helsinki there is a special collection, 9 million insects and the oldest are from 1700. That is one of the biggest in Europe. One of the insects in that collection is Bombus cullumanus, the bee of cullum. That is very sympathetic. It is fluffy and striped. This is disappearing from the whole Europe, says insect scientist Juho Paukkunen. What is this news all about? Well, the most important pollinators are bees and bumblebees. Also butterflies and flies and some beetles are pollinators. 75% of all the crops needs pollinators. Over 40% of all the pollinators is threatened by extinction and the amount of insects is rapidly decreasing. Flying insects have collapsed over 75% during 27 years. And the reason for these are destruction of habitats, pesticides, alien species and climate change. And here you can see that Columns B from the Museum of Natural Sciences in Helsinki. Here is the graph showing amount of flying insects collapsing over 75% in Germany only in 27 years. The world's fruit production is in big danger if the amount of pollinator keeps going down. In China the situation has been in some places very bad so that peoples have to pollinate the fruit trees. In worst case scenario the lack of pollinators might lead to increase of refugees and problems around the world might increase the price of the food also here in Finland. So goodbye fruits, coffee and jeans. Without pollinators our food source might come more simple, lacking for example some important vitamins. It might be that we have to use more pills says insect scientist Juho Paukkunen. For example, coffee, cacao and cotton are polluted by insects. Jeans might become a luxus product that only seldom can afford. Many of the plants that are preventing erosion and are cleaning the air are also dependent on pollinators. And insects are also food for many animals like for birds and many Insect eating birds populations have been collapsing in four decades over 90%. One reason might be the lack of insects. Also population sizes of some pests can explode if the insects eating those are disappearing. The bumble species of boreal forests have suffered a lot from the climate change. On other areas of Europe and Northern America the global warming has also decreased the amount of bees so much that we can almost talk about mass extinction. And very much the populations have collapsed over there where the temperature have risen a lot, like in Spain and Mexico. So what can we do to save these pollinators and these insects? There are in this Yle article some tips what we can do and we will go more closely these actually five tips what we can do. And number one tip is plant some plants to your balcony or to your yard. It also makes your balcony and yard look much nicer. Another tip is not to cut your grass entirely but leave it. Leave your grass and let it grow so that there will be a biodiversity of plants in your yard and all the insects like this much more than the grass that has been cut to the one millimeter. The third tip is build insect hotel. And there is one picture, but actually I have also one example here. So you can build a hotel for the insects because humans have affected the natural environment of these insects and cut all the trees and good places for the insect nests. One good idea is to build hotel for insects and this 
Insect Hotel is built by my daughter, daughter and there in the Yle artikkeli there is also instructions how to build these kind of things. As the spring goes little further here in Finland, I will take this with my daughter outside and in the future episodes of the Blue Marble News Watch we can check how the insects like about our insect hotel. And I think this is the only hotel in the world that coronavirus is not affecting. Hope Let's all hope that coronavirus is history soon. The fourth tip is avoid pesticides. Let's be clear, it says here in some kind of demonstration, but that is a big threat to all the insects if we are using pesticides. And the fifth tip is innovate yourself. So if you have any good idea how to save insects and bumblebees, please leave a comment. And if you like Callum's bumblebee and think that it is important to conserve these insects, please subscribe, click on the bell and push like. So our animal of the week this week is Callum's bumblebee, Bombus Kullumanus. Colum's bumblebee is any of over 250 species in the genus Bombus. Most bumblebees are social insects that form colonies with a single queen. Like their relatives, the honeybees, bumblebees feed on nectar. Bumblebees are important agricultural pollinators, so their decline in Europe, North America and Asia is a cause for concern. Bumblebees do not exhibit in the bee dances used by honeybees. Bumblebees have been observed to partake in social learning. Queen and worker bumblebees can sting. So that is all from this week and hope you liked it and uh, stay tuned for more news videos. See you next week. Bye.